Well, joining us, he heads the U.S. delegation to that uh, conference that's taking place here in Paris on Tuesday. David Turk is U.S. Deputy uh, Secretary of Energy. Thank you for speaking with us here. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. Uh, we just saw that report by, by, by Robert Parsons there uh, in the south of, uh, of Ukraine. What is the urgent thing that uh, governments and the private sector need to bring right now to uh, the, the, those, those repair guys in Ukraine? Well, f first of all, let's just acknowledge uh, this for what it is. This is horrific. This is horrific. This is despicable. There are lives being lost. There are lives being uh, upturned. And I think what we need to do is work urgently, governments, private sector, all of us to do what we can to help the Ukrainian people. And that's exactly what the U.S. government's doing. And that's why it's such an honor to lead the delegation to be part of this incredibly important meeting uh, tomorrow to try to make sure everybody's doing their part. And where do you start? What do you do? And how much do you do? Because the, the old chestnut question is, do you invest a lot when it could be bombed again? So it starts with uh, the Ukrainian government. So we've been working very closely with the Ukrainian government and making sure that we are uh, providing them what they need in a prioritized way. So the Ukrainian government has been sharing a list prioritized of what they need on the electricity sector to us, to the French government, to other key countries around the world. And then we're looking to do uh, see what we can to help the cause. So we've had extensive discussions with our own industry in the U.S., our utility CEOs that I've had countless conversations with and see what they have available that we can ship over there and help the Ukrainians in their time of need. What kind of things? So it's everything. Uh, there is an awful lot of damage, as the report just showed. And so we're talking transformers. We're talking all sorts of electrical equipment. And uh, they need uh, significant quantities, substantial quantities. And uh, we need to help them. This is showing solidarity. This is pushing back against the horrific attacks on the electricity sector. All right. Just stay with us because we're going to cross live now uh, to Ukraine, to one of our uh, uh, team there. Uh, senior correspondent uh, James Entre uh, is not in the south, but in the uh, eastern Donetsk region uh, in uh, Bakhmut, that uh, town that uh, the Russians have been trying for months to take. I, I understand, James, it's been another fierce day uh, of fighting. Uh, what's the situation where you are right now? Well, this morning we went into Bakhmut. We drove into Bakhmut and we really could uh, witness with our own eyes that there is still heavy artillery shelling. And this artillery shelling is also touching the western part of the city, indeed the eastern part of the city, which is the other side of uh, the Bakhmutka River, is really the battle zone, if you will. They call it the grey zone in the city. But the western part, for example, this morning we were driving in and basically as, as we were driving, we saw one building uh, was on fire and we were told that it was shelled just minutes before. So, uh, yeah, very tense situation in Bakhmut with uh, a lot of people uh, trying to leave at, at this stage and you know constant constant shelling and um, gunfire you can hear across the city uh, as indeed uh, well as you know the situation in the city is very tough huh? there's no electricity there's no heating there's no network no no uh, cellular coverage uh, and of course uh, people are, are, are suffering a lot so yeah tense situation inside Bakhmut. no electricity uh, no water and yet People are staying, James. Now, people are staying, but people are also leaving. Now, yes, according to experts, we don't have a definitive figure, but it's somewhere between two to 7,000 people who are still living inside this city that used to count over 70,000 people before the war. So over 90% of the population has fled. And indeed, this morning, well, we spoke to a, a young couple who were uh, fleeing, decided to flee to Dnipro simply because they were living in two separate homes. Both their homes had been bombed over the past week, and they decided it was really uh, time to go. Uh, uh, indeed, both of them uh, were not very happy to leave their city. They were telling us that uh, they indeed uh, loved very much. She was staying because her father wanted to stay because he's pro-Russian, she's pro-Ukrainian. He wanted to stay because he's an orphan and he was staying with his guardians, but this was just too much. So they got on that bus uh, to Dnipro telling us that they were heartbroken, but they needed uh, desperately uh, to leave the city. The people who are staying at the city at this stage are basically elderly people who tell us they have nowhere to go, people who physically can't move, which of course is something 
very difficult. And then some very, very brave volunteers who are there to help a lady telling us yesterday, well, look, you know, we take care of these elderly people. Most of them are, are alone. If who we don't do it, who is going to do it? So, yep, uh, fewer and fewer people inside Bakhmut at this stage. And yes, a lot of shelling, including on the western bank of the, the, of the Bakhmutka River. James Andre reporting live uh, from Bakhmut. Many thanks uh, for, for that live update. We're in the company of uh, the U.S. Deputy Secretary of Energy, David Kurt Turk, in Paris uh, for that conference that takes place uh, on Tuesday. Uh, uh, and you listen to what the situation is there and how raw it is. Uh, is it the same the way it's being felt by ordinary citizens in the United States? Well, I, I think so. Um, I think there's been an incredible solidarity from the French people, others in Europe, right? I think you all here in Europe uh, maybe get a sense of it in a more tangible way because it's not that far away. But uh, I can assure you in conversations, not just in Washington, D.C., but across the country, the level of solidarity, the level of support and appreciating and understanding it's not just supporting this incredible bravery that we're seeing in the Ukrainians, this is supporting democracy. This is supporting a country's ability to, to make its own decisions. And so I think those ideals we hold firm in the U.S., that France holds firm in terms of its own origin story, I think that is incredibly compelling as well. Now, uh, the conference, again, brings together the public and private sector. Um, you're from the Energy Department uh, in the United States. People associate the Energy Department with nuclear power a lot. So why, why, why is it you heading the delegation? Well, it's because energy is being targeted so systematically in uh, Ukraine. And so there are other infrastructure needs for sure, but electricity in the energy sector right now is being targeted. And so we're stepping up, working with our State Department colleagues, working with others. And so that's why I'm here representing not only the Department of Energy, but the entire U.S. government in a unified way. Uh, Ukraine, which has four nuclear plants, uh, four nuclear sites, I should say, 15 reactors, um, are you uh, offering your services and uh, to Ukraine when it, when it comes to uh, nuclear power? So we absolutely are. We've got a phenomenal group of experts in this area, and we've been working with the Ukrainian government for months and months uh, on these efforts, including making sure that they have backup generators and the diesel for those backup generators and putting pressure on the Russians, putting pressure on everyone to step up and make sure that we don't uh, conduct a war in the middle of uh, civilian nuclear plants. That's uh, a recipe for disaster. Is, uh, on that score, working with your hosts, the French, are they partners or rivals when it comes to uh, the nuclear sector? So I'm really struck. Uh, President Macron was in Washington visiting President Biden uh, not too many days ago, and I was just struck that the breadth and depth of the partnership, including on the energy side, and we signed a new uh, agreement to work on nuclear issues, work on R&D and some other efforts on the nuclear side. So I think there's an awful lot more that brings us together, including on the nuclear space, than, uh, than uh, we compete sometimes on. And we understand that you might have some big announcement coming up when it comes to nuclear power in the future. So there is a big, big announcement uh, coming up tomorrow. I don't want to steal my boss's thunder, Secretary Granholm. She'll be making an announcement uh, tomorrow. It's been leaked already in the press, but this about is about fusion. About how a this is a fusion. this is a big, big deal. So I uh, urge everyone to pay attention to that uh, press conference tomorrow. David Turk, uh, U.S. Deputy Secretary of Energy. Thank you for speaking with us. Thank you. Pleasure to be with you.